Well, here we go. Chess.com just released a 72-page report on none other than Hans Niemann himself. It's pretty fascinating. Uh, I just finished going through this. I highlighted some things that I want to draw your attention to. I'm going to keep this pretty brief, pretty quick. Hopefully save you some time so you don't have to read all of this. One thing I will note, even though it says 72 pages, it's really just like a 20-page report. And then there's like a whole bunch of extra graphs and exhibits and things kind of at the bottom. But most of the information is in the first 20 pages. I will link this below in the description. If you want to check it out yourself, feel free to do that. Let's go ahead and jump right into this. And I'm actually going to shrink myself down here a little bit. So I'm kind of just off to the side. And um, we do have a baby in the house. And so if you hear some screaming throughout this video, I apologize, but it's, it's possible that you will hear that. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started here. I've highlighted, like I said, what I wanna draw your attention to. I'm not going to read everything. I assume you guys can read this uh, for yourself if you would like. Oh, and real quickly, before we get started, some interesting facts for you. The word engine shows up 29 times in this report. The word Hans shows up 188 times. The word Magnus, 51 times. And the word cheat or cheating or cheated, something like that, 132 times. All right, I'm not sure if you needed to know that, but I thought it was interesting. Anyway, let's keep going. So first things first, uh, we estimate that fewer than 0.14% of players on chess.com ever cheat. So I thought this was pretty interesting because you know everybody's talking about how cheating is such a huge problem. Everybody's doing it and it's like, we have to get this under control. 0.14% really isn't that bad. Now that being said, it's one of those situations where then the one time that somebody cheats against you, even if you played, let's say, 99 games against people that were not cheating, you're going to remember that one game as opposed to the other 99. It just that's just how uh, our brains work. Right? We focus on that negative one. And so it seems like it's maybe a bigger uh, problem than it actually is. Now, that being said, 0.14 percent is still uh, a lot of people. I don't know how many millions of people play on chess.com. I think it's like 20 million people. So there's still a lot of people that are cheating. But uh, if I would have guessed a percentage, I guess I would have thought maybe it was a little bit higher than that. Anyway, interesting to note. All right. Uh, we present evidence in this report that Hans likely cheated online much more than his public statement suggests. Now, it's important to hear that they did specify online. So they're not talking about too much over the board stuff. They do mention some of that, which we'll get into um, later. But primarily, we're focused on the online part of this. Okay. Okay. Uh, we were never pressured by Magnus or his team whatsoever to remove Hans from chess.com or revoke his invitation to the chess.com global championship. So the the timing, you know, worked out to where Magnus withdrew. We're going to see this a little bit later too, but Magnus withdrew. And then it was like, I think the same day or the next day or something like that, like almost at the same time, you know, Hans was removed. And so some people were saying like, well, hey, Magnus is talking with chess.com. They're basically saying that's not what happened. They had their own reasons for doing that. It wasn't because Magnus, you know, said, hey, you need to you need to remove him or anything like that. All right, let's keep going. Like I said, links below. You can read all this yourself if you want. I'm just highlighting what I've highlighted here for you. All right, timeline of events. This is pretty interesting. Um, September 4th is when everything kind of began. That's the game where Magnus played Hans and Hans wins, okay? Uh, September 5th, very next day, Magnus tweets his withdrawal from the event. Uh, you probably have heard that. And then after that, chess.com emails Hans privately, uh, which we kind of found out later, right? Uh, that his account was discreetly closed. A copy of this email is attached in exhibit a all right so here we are exhibit a just wanted to show you this is the email that they're referring to dear hans chess.com has elected to privately remove access from your account on chess.com yada 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 okay so they closed his account uh, at, at that point all right let's go back all right so the next day september 6 we have hans publicly addressing his ban on chess.com and he said he never cheated uh, in a tournament with the prize money online when when he was streaming or in a real game you guys probably remember that interview all right, September 8th, chess.com responds to that uh, with this tweet right here. This one, wow, I did not mean to do that. This one. And yeah, we've all kind of seen that already. Okay, basically they're saying we, we disagree. And that's kind of what prompted this whole report really shedding light on, on what exactly uh, they meant when they said we disagree with him. Okay. September 27th. Uh, was when Magnus released his public statement and essentially said uh, at some point in the middle of all that stuff, I believe that Neiman has cheated more and more recently than he has publicly admitted. Okay, great. 
Let's keep going. The basis of our decision to remove Hans from chess.com and withdraw his CGC invitation. Did Magnus tell us to close the account? They're basically reiterating, no, Magnus did not ask us to close his account or anything like that. All right, fine, let's keep going. Uh, does chess.com believe that Hans cheated in his September 4th over the board game, the one that started all of this? And essentially they're saying no direct evidence that proves Hans cheated at the September 4th game with Magnus or proves that he has cheated in other uh, over the board games in the past. Okay. So like I said before, they're focusing on the online part. They don't necessarily have evidence uh, related specifically to that over the board game. However, they do touch on that. Uh, you can see here it says they think it, it was suspicious and there's going to be some more uh, information on that a little bit further down. Okay. Let's keep going. All right. Yada, 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 yada. Hans cheating on chess.com. We are prepared to show within this report that he, in fact, appears to have cheated against multiple opponents in chess.com prize events. So if you remember Hans's interview, he said, no, I never cheated in events that had prize money. They're basically saying that's not true. Uh, these findings contradict Hans's public statement. Okay. These were the, the statements. Um, and let's keep going. Table one below contains the events and matches where it appears Hans cheated. All right. So this is basically the games uh, and you can see this is um how many total games were in the tournament and how many do they believe that he cheated in okay so nine for nine ten for ten this one right here pro chess league was kind of the only one where it looks like maybe some of the games he was playing for real 12 out of cheated only on 12 out of 32 but all the other ones you know 14 out of 14 10 out of 10 uh, you can see they all 100 percent cheating so all right and oh the other thing i should mention most of these you can see happened in 2020 which is definitely past the time frame, you know, when Han said he cheated when he was younger, when he was a kid, when he was like 12 years old or 16 years old. 2020, I believe he was, yeah, it says it down here, he would have been 17, right? Overall, we found that Hans has likely cheated in more than 100 online chess games, including several prize money events. He was already 17 when he likely cheated in some of these matches and games. He was also streaming in 25 of these games. Okay. Uh, Ken Reagan, independent expert in the field of cheat detection, expressed his belief that Hans cheated during 2015 and 2017 Title Tuesdays. All right, fine. We have the communication from uh, Ken there. Okay, great. Uh, and then we have here a private call between Danny and Hans. During this call, Hans confessed to the cheating offenses. And then they kind of go on to show some images of the conversations that were had. And essentially what this is all saying is that Hans did admit to cheating uh, more than, than like he said in the interview. And you can see some of that stuff here. On later dates, Hans continued to acknowledge his cheating, like we just said. Okay. And here's some more conversations between Hans and Danny. Like I said, the link is below. I'm not going to waste your time on that. You can go back and read that if you would like. I want to keep moving here. So section five was pretty interesting because they actually get into how cheat detection works. So we get a little, a little bit of an insight uh, into some of the things that chess.com uses to catch and prevent cheating. Now, I'm sure they're not giving us everything. Uh, I'm sure that there are some, let's just say, secrets that they have because obviously you don't want to tell the cheaters, right, everything that you're doing. But this is kind of a good, uh, you know, for, for those of us who are just kind of following the story. So uh, comparing the moves made to the engine recommended moves, obviously, right? Like if you play 100 moves uh, in a game that match up exactly with Stockfish, you're going to probably get flagged. Hey, what's going on? Um, removing some moves, so from the opening and the end game, that makes a lot of sense. There's probably lots and lots and lots of strong players who can play perfectly in the opening, right? You memorize an opening, you practice it, you play exactly what the engine showed you, there's nothing crazy about that. So it makes sense that they would remove that. And then even some end games, uh, if you've memorized a particular end game technique or a particular end game position, right? Like you, you might know exactly what you need to do. And of course it's going to match up with an engine. It doesn't mean you're cheating, right? So it makes sense that during the middle game where it's really complicated, maybe positions that have not been reached before in opening databases, those would be the type of positions uh, that you really want to kind of compare to, to stock visions and whatnot. Uh, key critical moves, kind of like what I just said, discussing with a panel of trained analysts and strong players. So they're having, uh, obviously, other people involved. It's not just automated, which is good. Comparing players' past performance and known strength profile. So it's like if a, somebody who's played, you know, on chess.com for years at an 800 
level hasn't really improved and then all of a sudden you just like start climbing and you you know you reach 2500 you're like hey what, what happened um and pay, let's see looking at the statistical significance of the results all right kind of same same kind of thing like what are the chances that this would happen uh browser behavior so this is pretty interesting apparently they do have a way to check if you're like opening a new browser or uh, i didn't realize that chess.com could do that uh, but i think that's what it's saying which is pretty interesting and then lastly you're reviewing the time usage when compared to difficult moves on the board so if you're only spending 30 seconds on a super complicated position where there's lots of potential options even grandmasters actually especially grandmasters would spend more time right they're not going to just rush and make a move they're going to calculate all these different variations and so if you're not doing that that could be a sign all right so that's pretty interesting kind of gives us uh, like i said some insight into how they detect and prevent cheating all right let's keep going um hundreds uh, they've closed the accounts of hundreds of titled players dozens of gms and even uh has elicited cheating confessions from four players in the top 100 fide ratings uh that was fascinating to me because sometimes you know you feel like cheaters are just these people who don't really know how to play chess they just want to beat people for the fun of it so they just plug in the moves and like, they don't really actually know what's going on no like four players that are some of the best players in the world uh, will still, you know, cheat, which, wow, it's, it's crazy, right? Uh, we've got some statements here. You can read these yourself. Uh, Levy, uh, Magnus, Anand, uh, Polgar, and um, even the Lugie down here. So um, I'm not going to read out those to you right now. The strength score. So this is pretty interesting. Um, essentially, this is a way that they measure how many of your moves match up with the engine. And you can see down here, pure engine usage alone would typically show scores between 125 to 150. Okay, so 150 is the maximum. You can see here, 150 is the closest to perfect chess. All right. And then they kind of break down. These are people who have cheated in the past, confessed GMs. And you can see what their rating was. Sorry, uh, you can see what their rating was and the strength score. So this person had the best one with 103, but even these other ones, uh, you know, 90s, 80s, confessed to cheating. And then here we have Hans's score right there. Okay, let's keep going. All right, so now we're going to talk a little bit about the over the board part. So we've talked about the online, it very clear to at least to chess.com that Hans was cheating online, which obviously like we talked about contradicted his statements, but over the board, uh, well, it's it's been a little bit more confusing, right? So their first thing that they're noting, he's the fastest rising top player in classical over the board chess in modern history, okay? So an increase in strength. And honestly, these tables didn't make as much sense as the graph down here. So I'm just going to jump straight down to figure A. You can see this red line is Hans. And uh, it's kind of small. Actually, let me see if I can maybe make it a little bigger. There we go. I think that's a little bit bigger. Uh, Hans is the red bar. And you can see he's in some company of strong players there. Bobby Fischer, uh, Magnus is on there. Lots of these, uh, Faruja, lots of these, you know, young stars and you can see from age 11 right here age 11 to 19.25 how much did their strength improve okay again uh this is another chart showing something similar uh, essentially what this is showing is that strength indicate at least i believe this is what's happening that strength indicator let me go back uh to whatever i was here 100 percent sorry uh that strength indicator that we just talked about right here if you imagine when you first start playing chess, it's going to be very low, your strength score, right? You're, you're not making very many moves that match up with an engine. So it's like blunder, blunder, blunder. Okay, maybe you had one or two moves that match up with the engine, but all the other moves are bad. As you get better, you will make more and more moves that match up with an engine. When you become the best in the world, like let's just say Magnus, for example, you're going to make a lot of moves that match up with an engine. And so your strength score would improve over time. And that makes sense, right? But what uh, chess.com is saying is that Hans's strength score has improved um, more than anyone ever, basically. You know, Bobby Fischer's on here, Magnus is on here. None of them ha had an improvement that he did. Okay, so that's, that's pretty interesting. Let's keep going here. Hans had the fastest and largest increase in FIDE classical ELO. So here's a figure. Uh, and basically what it's showing is as the years go by at the bottom, 
uh, after you hit 2,500, how much did your rating go up? So here's 2,500, here's 2,700. You can see all these lines representing different players. And notice uh, over here, Hans is the pink line, okay? And if you look at the pink line, look at how fast it goes from 2,500 to 2,700. It's faster than any other line. Uh, it looks like the red, who's the red? Yeah, Ali Riza Faruja looks like was probably the, the second closest there. But most of the lines, you know, it, it takes a little bit longer. It takes a few more years. And so they're just kind of showing, hey, this is, you know, maybe he's the best player ever, but uh, that's kind of concerning. All right, so here's another chart basically showing the same thing, but in a different way. This one is showing you how long did it take over here on the left in years uh, to reach uh, 2,700. Now, it's not quite 27. Hans was 2,699, but you can see he did it in less than two years where everybody else uh, took longer, right? And so same kind of thing, like I said, just a different way to show it. All right, next up, we have the plateau uh, right here, the plateau in strength. Okay, so essentially, let's actually skip this chart and go down to F. I think this is better. All these lines are all of these super high rated, mostly young players, okay? As they are improving, and I believe, yeah, by age. Okay, so at the bottom, you can see this is their, their age right here age 12, age 14, age 16, age 18, as the years go by and as they improve, most of these players do not have lines that go sideways, okay? So that go uh, like this, just sideways. It's almost always on a trend upward, okay? So like, look at all these lines. The only one that really goes sideways is this blue line, which is Hans Niemann. So you can see like right here, it's kind of going sideways. Uh, like this period right here, it's kind of going sideways. Most of these other lines, uh, are not doing that, okay? And so if he really is, let's just say, one of the best players to ever play the game, you would expect that the, the graph is gonna kind of keep going up. You're not gonna expect him to, to get stuck because why is he getting stuck Like if he's the best player? So that's kind of, you know, what they're, um, what they're showing there. Okay, figure G, basically uh, showing the same thing. Hans in this graph is the pink line and you can see how it's kind of up and down and it's sort of all over the place whereas most of the other lines are a bit more um, consistent, right? Okay, let's keep going. Um, I think most of this stuff was just kind of extra sort of related to what we've already covered. Let me see if there's anything else that I wanted to mention. Here we go. So section 10 the Sinkfield Cup and the game with Magnus. Basically, uh, the interesting part about this was that they measured the first three games of the Sinkfield Cup before they implemented the extra cheating precautions, okay? So the strength score of those first three games for Hans was 97, and then it went down to 86. So it drops quite a bit, basically is what they're saying. So if you can check this table here, we can see before, so the first three games, after and then the net result minus 10. All the other players uh, didn't really have a drop quite like that. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean anything. There was also a lot of media attention on Hans. And so, uh, th I mean, that could definitely affect your play. So I'm not trying to like say anything about that. I think that's, I don't really know how much that shows. I just wanted to mention it. Okay. Conclusion, uh, that's pretty much it. Like I said, 20 pages, that's pretty much the gist of the report. They do have like uh, all of these uh, appendices and, and extra things. We already looked at, at one of them. There's graphs and things here if you'd like to check that out. But that is the gist of it. So having said that, uh, in conclusion, uh, to be honest with you guys, let me actually make myself a little bit bigger here again. Uh, to be honest with you, I kind of feel like this was only a matter of time before we saw something like this. I kind of expected this based on chess.com's sort of original uh, tweet when they said, hey, we disagree with the, the frequency and, and you know the, the amount of cheating that Hans said. And so I expected this at some point. You know, I've been trying to kind of not choose sides, um, but when you see this and it, it looks like Hans did lie, uh, blatantly lied in that interview about how much he cheated. Uh, it's hard to believe what he says about the over the board. And it may be true. Like maybe he did he did play some really good over the board games. But personally, I'm going to have a hard time believing that seeing what I see here. You know, it, it's like uh, the boy who cried wolf. You, you say something that's not true long enough. Then when you say something true, nobody believes you. And so I kind of feel like that's 
unfortunately for Hans, that you know that's the situation that we're in right now. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens from this. I don't know, like if Fide is going to take this report and do anything with it, or if they have their own sort of investigation that's going to come to light at some point. Um, I'll try to keep you guys updated as, as I can without um, without this taking over the channel. You know, I'm still going to do other videos and stuff. So. Let me know what you guys think. As a reminder, links in the description. You can check this article out yourself if you would like. Obviously, chess.com did all the hard work putting this together. I'm just kind of giving you my opinion on it. So anyway, thank you guys. Stay sharp, play smart, and take care.